When you're setting up your home lab or your home server, there are so many different bits and pieces to get right. Um, it can be just mind-boggling how many different distributions of Linux there are out there and how many different ways you can really set this thing up. The easiest way I explained it to my fiance was Linux is like a box of Lego bricks with no instructions. Distributions are box sets of Lego bricks with instructions. And you can mix and match in all the different pieces any which way you want. And with that being super awesome to all of us computer nerds out there, it also can be extremely frustrating because you just don't know what you don't know. You don't know what you need. You don't know what you don't need until you mess with every single thing. And I have spent six months, maybe a little bit more, messing with all kinds of different setups to see what was perfect for myself. And unfortunately, everyone's home needs are going to be different than mine because everyone's hardware is going to be different. You know, if you're using an APU versus a CPU and GPU, it can make your setup drastically different. Um, I do want to give a heads up to everyone that thinks that they're going to use an APU and then they're going to use Proxmox because that's not going to work. You're not going to be able to pass through your GPU that's built into your APU to a Proxmox VM. Now, that's not just a limitation of Proxmox. That's VMware, TrueNAS, uh, you name it. Um, it's going to have a limitation on it. Um, it's just extremely hard to isolate the built-in GPU that an APU has. Um, you're just, you're not going to succeed. And if you do, please make a video about it. I would love to see it. I don't know uh, very many people that have ever gotten this to work. There's got to be some rare cases out there. I think there was a couple people on Reddit that said they got it to work. But really, if you're just trying to get things up and running, avoid using an APU for GPU pass-through in virtualization, period. Now, with that caveat out of the way, we do have a handful of different distros that we're going to look at. I have tried all these every which way you could flip them to make things work and I will tell you what my favorite is at the end of the video. However, let's go ahead and get this list started, shall we? Now, before anyone loses their shit and says, hey, some of these are workstations and not servers. Well, no shit, Sherlock. But this is for your home lab environment. So we're going to use what we have at our disposal. You're not running a massive data farm that needs hardcore Red Hat Linux on it. You're hosting some bullshit services at your house that are probably serving up media files or something like that. Okay, all jokes aside, now let's get into it. Now, first up, we've got Catchy OS. Catchy OS is actually what I run for my main workstation, and it is phenomenal, especially if you have an AMD X3D processor. It's it's awesome. They, they have fine-tuned it to where video games is just, mwah, just perfect. Um, it seems to be really stable, too. I've been running it for about a month now, and I really haven't seen any issues with it. Now, as far as being a server, it seems to be somewhat stable. Like I said, um, I've had just a couple of updates that I've had to roll back here and there, but really, overall, Catchy OS has, man, they've got just about everything that you would want uh, for your server operating system as, and as well as your just main workstation in general. Um, the way that I have my server set up and the reason I do have the desktop environment set as XFCE instead of GNOME or something else is because um, a caveat to remoting into a Linux server or workstation is we're at the in-between stage for X11 and Wayland still for VNC or RDP. And out of all of the different trial and errors that I have gone through and I have pulled out all of my hair just trying to get different things to work seamlessly every time, uh, the best desktop environment to have for VNC would be XF. CE or something that's based on X11. Yeah, you can go with Budgie, but XFCE is my go-to. Um, it's also just super solid and easy to work with. So 
that's why I've got that marked on just about everything for their desktop environment. Unless you're doing a headless server. Um, headless servers, that's fantastic. That's how my server is currently set up. Um, just running cockpit. So you can manage it from your web browser. One reason I did list uh, Catchy OS as the first option is because since it has a bleeding edge kernel, you're going to have access to the latest uh, hardware. So your graphics drivers, if you've got an Intel ARC card that you're going to be using or a newer AMD card or a newer NVIDIA card, you're definitely want to go with a bleeding edge kernel. An Intel ARC card, you're going to want at least kernel 6.12 or higher. If you end up doing a backport, say, on a Debian distribution or some other distribution uh, to 6.12, say... Uh, one year you're watching this video that 6.12 isn't baked into Debian yet, um, you're going to have a bad time. You're going to get a very unstable environment. Now, the next up is going to be Diet Pi OS. This thing doesn't get enough notoriety. Most people just use it for the Pi hole or for like your Raspberry Pi. Uh, really, this is phenomenal on an x86. Um, there's just, there's so many options available that are pre-configured to where one-click install for Nextcloud, Docker, Home Assistant, uh, Jellyfin. I mean, it, it's got well over a hundred different software titles that are pre-configured for you and it is phenomenal now it's built on debian so it's going to be super stable however the caveat with that is it does have an older kernel as of this recording uh the current kernel is 6.1 i believe it will be switching over to 6.12 but that will be sometime in 2025 whenever they update debian trixie as far as getting virtual machines to work on it, ooh, it is a bitch. Holy shit. Trying to get KVM up and running on this. I did get it up and running and actually stable. It was just a lot of pulling teeth, getting everything just right, getting user groups and permissions and everything. It was a pain in the ass, but it's doable. I actually love the Diet Pi OS. It is, it's phenomenal. There's only one developer and he's got, you know, a handful of contributors that help him out. But man, this project totally needs some extra love from the community. Running this is going to be uh, headless. However, it does have one-click install for, once again, the XFCE desktop environment. And it also has one-click install to get up and running with your VNC and RDP to this to make it super simple. So if you're just getting started with the home lab or uh, your home server, you might want to try this one before you try anything else. Just watch some different tutorials on how to install it. Um, there's plenty of them out there. There's no need for me to make it a video on it. So even if you're a seasoned vet in uh, the Linux community, man, if you if you haven't considered Diet Pi OS for your server, um, man, this thing is just rock solid and it's got so many pre-configured options. Definitely give Diet Pi a try on your x86 platform. It is badass. Next up, we've got Fedora. Now, Fedora is a go-to solid, solid operating system. You know, its big brother is going to be Red Hat. It's got all the bells and whistles that you're going to need to get your home server, home lab up and running. DNF, it's a solid package manager. Stands for do not fail. So, I mean, you know, it's going to be solid. Uh, also, Linus, this is his go-to operating system. I ran this as my main operating system for my workstation for for several months this last year and I did test it out for my server there was a couple things I just didn't care for I was having some issues with jellyfin and a couple of other things but I don't really think it would be too much of Fedora's fault I was just getting fed up with it and I wanted to try different distributions. I think the main reason I quit using it is because I used it as my main workstation OS for so long and I wanted to try something else. But uh, not much really to say about Fedora other than it is a very solid option. Um, it'll get just about everything you need done. Getting things installed and working all to play nice. Unlike the Diet Pi OS, you're going to have to configure and tweak every single individual program and service to play nice with each other. But really, solid, 
solid operating system for a workstation and server. Definitely recommend this one. Next up is going to be Ubuntu. And what can I say about Ubuntu? Um, fuck Ubuntu. I don't like snaps. I don't like the way they do package management. Um, they just, there's something about it that just doesn't set right with me. I don't, there, there was something even about the command line I just didn't care for. Um, I did try out Rhino Linux. It, it's, it's a cool take on it. Um, it's, it's got a really unique package management. I really just kind of put it in here for funsies. I didn't run it very long as my server. I think maybe it lasted all of two or three hours before I was like, fuck this. I am trying something else. But anyways, fuck Ubuntu. All right, next up we've got Proxmox. Now, Proxmox, I did run for quite some time. Um, I actually ran it for probably about a month maybe a month and a half. Um, Proxmox is really cool. Um, my God, the user interface is total dog shit. You can definitely tell that uh, they had zero love from the user interface or graphical user interface. Um, it is, oh, it is horrendous. However, once you get used to it, you can get the job done uh, as far as getting all your virtual machines spun up and everything. Uh, the GPU pass-through... I, I got it to work. Um, my God, it it's a fucking nightmare getting it to work. Uh, if you're if you're just new to Proxmox, extremely counterintuitive. Um, it just the whole layout, the whole layout and look and feel of Proxmox, it is just dog shit. However, once you do get past that hurdle, it is solid. Um, the only thing that sucks about Proxmox is if you've got a newer GPU and you want to do GPU pass-through, you have to backport a newer kernel because Proxmox is also a Debian release, but it's a special version of Debian and a special kernel that they've developed. And it is going to become unstable as fuck whenever you upgrade to a backported kernel so you can get a newer... Intel Arc graphics card or a, the latest NVIDIA or AMD graphics card to be GPU pass-throughs. Um, if you just got older hardware, oh man, Proxmox is solid go-to. I would still be using it today if it didn't have the weird kernel and they had something that was newer. Um, I think whenever I had it running, it was on kernel 6.1 but I needed 6.12 for an Intel Arc card that I was testing out. And it just became buggy as fuck whenever I did a backport. So, if you've got older hardware, this is definitely a go-to. Um, if you've got newer hardware and you need to do virtualization, skip this. Uh, you'll save yourself a whole lot of headache. Other than that, super solid, and I really enjoyed it. Alright, last up, we've got TrueNAS Scale. Now, this was actually one of my very first attempts to run as my server when I was brand new to Linux. Um, man, the user interface, again, another dog shit interface. <laughs> the layout is counterintuitive. How you do things is counterintuitive. Everything's extremely convoluted in trying to get things up and going. Uh, virtual of machines and it is total dog shit. Um, doing Docker containers, it's limited. They've got an app store, so like, if you like what's in their app store, yeah, you're you're good to go. But if you want to deploy your own stuff, it's it's tricky as fuck. Um, I I always had really bad performance issues whenever I was running Docker containers in this. Um, as far as storage, I mean, shit, even just making a network share with just so many unnecessary steps, and I cannot recommend this at all. Some people are going to bitch and moan, oh, blah, 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 this is the go-to. Yeah, um, not for me, maybe not for most people, it's just, it's, it's the, it's the interface, the interface is worse than Proxmox, and I don't even know how the fuck they pulled that off. But they made it more counterintuitive and just completely convoluted trying to go through all of the different sub-menus to get simple things done like making a 
fucking network share. Fuck True Naz. <laughs> Anyways, your mileage may vary. I'm sure there will be some hate comments from some True Naz fanboys, but I'm sure if they ever get a graphical user interface overhaul and uh, really put some time and effort into that, uh, I'll revisit it maybe one of these days. And last up, for my MVP, my go-to, what I ended up sticking with is Diet Pie. Diet Pie OS is the GOAT, the greatest of all time. It is so badass. Um, you know, the get, getting the virtual machines up and working, that was a pain in the ass. But once I got past that part, everything else is just solid as a rock. It's just amazing. It is the go-to home server operating system that I recommend to everyone. If you're just starting out, if you've done this for quite some time, and I'm telling you, the easy install that it has for getting all these different services <laughs> to work is just phenomenal. So what I did is for my GPU pass-through, I was like, you know what, I'm done with that. So I don't want to dick with passing through my GPU to a virtual machine. So what I did is I just made Diet Pi my base OS, and then I ran virtual machines of Diet Pi inside the Diet Pi. I made a virtual machine for Docker. I made a virtual machine for Home Assistant. I made a virtual machine for uh, Nextcloud. And in each of them, I just allocated my resources that I needed for it and go through the one-click install and did just that one specific thing for that virtual machine so everything's isolated out. But for the base install, I did my Jellyfin and everything else I was going to use for, uh, my, for my video card to do uh, video editing and decoding and encoding. I found that skipping the whole GPU pass-through bullshit saves so much headache by just using your base OS as the host of the video card. And then everything else that is just CPU bound uh, for virtual machines, just spin those up in your virtual machines underneath it. That is, that's the easiest way to set things up. Completely just skip GPU pass through. Um, it's fun, oh hey, look what I did, but really to save yourself headache, just Fuck GPU pass-through. Use it as your base OS and then put virtual machines that only require CPU um, so you can do your Docker containers and Nextcloud and whatever else you need to do. But anyways, guys, that is all I've got for this video. I know there's some really strong opinions that I've got on some things that uh, a lot of you may or may not agree with. Um, you know, that's what the comment section's for. Have at it. We'll catch you in the next one.